I live in Colorado, and I was seeing family of mine in Georgia. I got myself a hotel room close to the Georgia Aquarium, and I talked my cousin into taking me there. I'm a female, and so is my cousin, and we were two years apart at the time, at 20 and 22. We went there in the afternoon since we mostly spent the day with the rest of the family at dinner. So when we got to the aquarium, I had my camera ready to get some really cool pictures of the fishies. So did another guy, but he wasn't there to take pictures of the sea stuff. I saw him acting strange in the first room exhibit. He was moving like a weirdo with flailing his elbows everywhere and all that. But what put me off was his description. He had one of those mullet-type haircuts from the 70s, and he had on bright pink shorts and a fanny pack. What put me off the most was the single-line mustache. I pretty much didn't pay any more attention to him than I usually would anyone else, but he really didn't try to hide the fact that he was trying to take pictures of me. He had what looked to be a really expensive camera, what with all the fancy lens and all. This guy looked like he was about to make a magazine with unsuspecting girls passing by. I think that's what he was doing, since he followed me and my cousin all through the place. I couldn't enjoy myself because everywhere I went, I'd hear the camera shutter, and it wasn't pointed at the fish. He thought he was being sneaky. I ran off to the front of the museum to tell the staff that the guy was taking pictures of me, and they asked him to leave. I left him in one of the rooms arguing with the staff, and I thought I was good to go. I didn't see him again that afternoon. Night however was different. Back at the hotel, I'd gone into my room already, and had gotten ready to do some night swimming with my cousin since they had a pool. I wasn't about to let that go to waste. About 20 minutes after we had gotten into the pool, I heard that familiar camera shutter sound that I'd heard all afternoon. It startled me, so I got out of the pool, looked around, and spotted him sitting in the bushes where I think he was trying to hide, and not doing a good job of it at all. The bright pink shorts were what gave him away loudly. I told my cousin to get out of the water and get back to my room. I ran to the hotel staff and had them call the police to report him. By the time they got there, he was gone and he had gotten away with it. I gave them a description of the guy, but then I called my aunt up and asked her if I could sleep on her couch. She thankfully had a whole blow-up mattress ready to go and told me I should have asked sooner. I was there in 20 minutes and asleep in about an hour. I did tell her all about it in the morning, and she said that she had seen that guy before. Apparently he's a menace, and he just does that. Who knows where he came from, or what he does with the photos that he takes of random girls that he finds, but it can't be anything good. If this is his way of getting a girlfriend, maybe he'd have an easier time without that mustache and the bright pink shorts. The fanny pack was also female repellent to say the least. I have a joke with my cousin now years later, that if she does something stupid, the guy in pink shorts is coming to get her. I think that guy is still out there though. I took a trip to New York back in 2014 because my friend lived there and I wanted to see her. It was just going to be us two girls being in the city and hanging out like old times, even though we were still young. I flew up there and had rented a car when I got there to drive to her place and we took off from there. I wanted to hit all the shops that she usually went to before sundown, so we started in the morning. The first thing we did was go straight to the middle of downtown. I would tell you where we were at, but it was my first and probably last time of going to New York, and everything was pretty unfamiliar to me, and still is. One thing was that things were not scary to me there, I was dazzled by the city because I'd come from a small town, and had never been to a place like this. Once we found a parking spot downtown, we started walking to one of the shops there, and the first thing of course we run into was a guy walking through town himself. 
He stopped me and asked me if he could use my phone. Well, I absentmindedly handed it over to him, and he smashed it on the ground and tried to run away. I didn't see his friend with the camera until he started running, but I ran after him to throw what I thought were the remains of my phone at him. He turned back around and started yelling at me that I almost hit him with the phone and that he didn't smash mine. He got up in my face and yelled at me some more, and I absolutely just crumbled. He was a lot bigger up close, too. My friend came between us and told him to just give me back my phone and leave us alone. He did, but not before dropping it on the ground anyways. I didn't ask for him to prank me, and that really did piss me off. He and his friend left and we kept going. I mostly forgot about him until I noticed him following us into one of the stores that we went into. I tipped my friend off to him being there, but she pretty much just ignored the tip off. I watched him, but all he did was do the same to me. I don't think he knew that I saw him. So we skipped to other stores, and he followed us into each one. His friend was nowhere to be seen, so I knew he was probably stalking us by himself for whatever reason. People can't just let things go. But he's the one who made me think he smashed my phone. What did he expect me to do? Laugh and think it was all in good fun? That phone was probably the most expensive thing that I owned, and it was my lifeline in case I got into any sort of trouble. I did stupidly hand it to him though, but I'm not the brightest blonde in the world. So a few hours later, he stopped stalking us, and I was able to relax and actually enjoy my time with my friend. She had probably already forgotten about the guy anyway and what happened that morning, but I hadn't. I was paranoid that he was going to try to do something to us. Well, I was right to be paranoid. I guess since I'd thrown that broken phone at him, he had a vendetta against me. He set up another prank but he had no regard for safety or private property of stores. He set up one of those bucket on the door frame things. Points for originality, I guess, but this one got him in a lot of trouble. He waited until we got into the store to set up a self-triggering prank. This is what my friend told me since I was the one who caught the brunt of it. You'll understand why in a second. So I walked out of the storefront and I heard a click looked up, and all of a sudden everything went black, and I was completely soaked. I also had a strange pain in my teeth. The next thing I knew, I was being picked up off the ground by somebody, and they were asking if I was alright. I couldn't see because I had something covering my face completely. Apparently, the prank was that he'd wait until I walked out of the store, and then he would dump a bucket of thick paint on my head. The bucket didn't turn over, I guess, like he thought it would, and it hit me in the head, but then swung down and hit me in the teeth. He was also caught on a camera they had on the roof, because the roof was accessible to anyone, and they had a camera out there. He apparently was also nearby, and the police caught up to him. Once I got the paint off, I could see again, but my tooth was broken in the front. I hope all that trouble getting a prank on film, which is what I assumed he was doing, landed him only three subscribers, and he did it all for nothing. He actually hurt me, and I hope he learned from this experience not to pick on people, because they don't suspect it. Views are worth nothing if someone else gets hurt in your stupid acts. I've seen some very weird people in my time but nothing like this. I'm a female, and I just turned 26. This happened right before my birthday, and I can't really explain it. I work at a gas station near a store that participates in Black Friday. I guess that's probably what spawned this, because any other time, it's pretty uneventful for the most part. There's been some real stories on that day, and this one is mine. Here, Black Friday isn't just the day, but it happens most of the week around that day. I was at work at night before the Friday in question, 
stocking shelves and getting ready to take customers. I had some strange people come in, mostly crackheads from the surrounding area, but nothing like this one guy who showed up. He was wearing a banana costume. It didn't look like it was too flashy or anything, but definitely annoying to move around in, and I definitely noticed him. At first, I was amused to see this, and it was all cool. The guy stumbled into the door, because I assumed he was having issues walking in it. Nope, he was drunk. The first thing he did was stumble over to the foodstuffs, and pick up a few things and bring them up to the counter. He then immediately started to hit on me. I told him I had a boyfriend and I wasn't looking myself. I think that insulted him, but I'm not too sure. If he was insulted, oh well, not my fault. So the guy paid for his stuff and stuck around the outside of the store for hours. I kept watch of him, but he didn't do much other than stand there and dance once in a while. So I have to mention that I didn't have a working car at the time. I walked down the street to and from work. It would never been a problem, except on the super cold nights when it would drop to 20 and below. The banana guy did disappear at some point that night, but when it came time for me to go home, he was in the parking lot of the store. I didn't think he would follow me out of the area, but he did. I had to walk about a mile to my house, and I guess by that time, banana guy was still drunk, but he wasn't stumbling around anymore. He kept calling to me, and I ignored him. He wasn't saying hey or anything, he was just making noises and calling me weird names. I rounded the corner to dip somewhere and hide from him, and I found a bush to get behind. I saw him round the corner as well, but he kept going. Once he was out of sight, I ran over to the next street and walked home that way. About halfway home, Banana Guy found me again and started tailing me. I was too out of energy to care, and I planned to attack him if he got too close. Maybe he wouldn't get that close. I was still scared that he was going to try something, but he never did. He dipped out right before I got back on the street to my home, where I would either decide to go home or start walking to the police station another few blocks over. Thankfully, he left me alone and I was able to go in and just go to sleep. The next few days, however, would be completely different. Banana Guy did find where I lived and would stand in front of my house every morning without his little costume and yell things at me. I asked him what his problem was and he just sat there and called me names and yelled at me until I called the police in front of him. He was actually stupid enough to say he didn't believe me and waited there until they came. That was the end of Banana Guy, as he was arrested for stalking and harassment. Good riddance. He did come back up to the store, but would turn right back around when he saw that I was the one working. I don't know what the guy's problem was, but I must have done something unforgivable to him. I have no clue what that might have been. I'm just glad he's done stalking me and doesn't do it anymore. I advise you that if you search the deep web, that you make sure that you know what you're doing, getting into, and that you know how to stay safe. Websites such as the one that I was on can be very dangerous. I hear Craigslist will gain you a very dangerous friend. Well, the deep web can gain you a very dangerous stalker. This is what happened to me. The website I was on was just one of those normal everyday chat rooms. But since it was on the deep web, through various backdoors, twists and turns, the people in it were a little overboard. The chat seemed to have no rules, no moderators, and absolutely no security. I thought it was fine since it only allowed other users to see you as an icon and that was it. IP address wasn't involved in the least bit. That's what I thought. I later found out that if you clicked a user's profile, it showed what their IP address was, what country they were from, and what machine they were using. 
You know, the normal shady shit. I didn't know that until I got into an argument with this other guy who decided he was the owner of the chat room, even though he wasn't. He thought I didn't belong in the chat, whereas everyone else there welcomed me and kept telling him to shut up. Sounds like a chat room, Nazi. Just some busybody ass crotch. I dropped out of the chat after he started to flood it like a moron, and nobody could use it then. The chat crashed anyways. I decided that was enough internet for that day, and I got out to do something else. Later on that same month, I started to notice things around my house were missing. The first thing to go was my generator. It had been sitting on my front porch for years, only getting used during hurricane power outages. I called the police when it went missing to file a report and give them the info to alert me if it was found in a pawn shop or something. It was never found. My car was vandalized by someone not too long after that. I finally knew what was going on when someone did the old brick through the window thing with a message attached. It was a cryptic message, of course, leading to absolutely nothing. All it said to me was that I ruined the chat room with my autism. That's not the word the note used. I at least had an idea who this was since he had given that away. I called the police to tell him someone had been stalking my house and was causing a lot of damage to my property. A few weeks went by, and a few cops searching the area every now and then, and they finally caught someone. I was really only home at night, since I worked all the time, and I never had time to sit around and watch for someone myself. It happened around 11pm one night. I heard a cop siren go off for a few seconds and that made me look out the window to see somebody dressed in a bank robber attire and being detained by the police. I decided to go outside and see the damage, and lo and behold, the guy outed himself. He saw me walk out, and he asked me a question. So you've come to rub in your victory. I'm assuming he's a neckbeard. I just looked at the cop and told him I'd like to press charges. So let me throw this into perspective. I went onto a deep web chat room, picked up a stalker because he didn't want me in the chat, and he decided to trace my location to come and stalk me and damage my property. The nerve of some people. I don't know how he found me that easy, but that was just out of the realm of intelligence. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. I've lived by that ideal all my life, and that's one of the last things I actually said to him. I really hope he got the idea. Before we begin this story, sorry about any misarranged thoughts. Me don't word very goodly. There's always that one person in every group of friends that has a hard time getting a significant other. I was that girl. I was so desperate for anyone to spend my time with that I did a really bad thing. I got on Tinder. I've heard horror stories about how bad Tinder relationships can go from there. I'll be redacting all names from this story for security purposes. I found him on Tinder when I was matched with him. He messaged me first, and I talked to him to find out that he was really sweet and apparently a huge nerdy teddy. I took a friend with me to go meet him and he wasn't any different than he was when I talked to him online. We met at a little coffee shop downtown. I talked like an idiot around him because I was really nervous meeting him for the first time. He seemed to really play it cool, but it really wasn't that great of a scene. I just look back now and cringe at myself. We went out on a few dates after that that really opened my eyes to who he was but also gave me the time that I needed to stop being so stupid. So after I figured out that he was actually into some really shady stuff, I didn't want to see him anymore. I won't mention what that was, but I told him that I wasn't comfortable being around him, and I was thinking about reporting him, but I didn't tell him that part. Come to find out, he liked me because I looked young, even though I was 20 at the time. 
When I told him I wasn't comfortable, he got upset and started explaining the legalities of it. I told him I didn't care. I just met him and he sprung this on me. He told me that we had met before. I asked him what that had to do with anything, and he told me something that I really wish I'd never heard. He said it like it was one of the most normal things ever, and that he had been watching me for years now. I had to ask again about that because maybe it didn't come out right, or maybe I heard wrong. I asked him to repeat it. He told me that he had been seeing me around for years, and it was common knowledge for him to know where I lived and where I liked to go, so I was an easy pickup. So he was a stalker. He drooled over me for years apparently, and has just been a creep. I would have been fine if he hadn't told me, but he opened his mouth and actually said it. I told him to stay away from me, and I hung up the call that I was on with him. After that, I noticed that he was actually everywhere. I'd see him a lot out in public, and realized that he wasn't just following me like a stalker. He went to the same place as I did. It was unfortunate because it enabled this type of behavior. After that, he tried his best to get me to talk to him, and I just wouldn't have any of it. I ended up moving away a few years later, and stopped seeing him as much. But, at least he didn't know where I lived anymore. I was working at my retail job on Black Friday, and the worst possible person showed up to it and caused a bunch of trouble. We'll just call her Karen because, well, it fits. I have no clue to what her actual name was, by the way, and I won't be giving out mine either. So, I'm a male in my 20s, and I work at an undisclosed store that has a great staff, as we pretty much all act like family. It was the day of Black Friday, and I'd never seen one of those things. Well, it's not exactly what you'd see on the news, where people are climbing over each other and acting crazy. There were a ton more people in the store than usual, and the atmosphere was much louder, but nothing too bad. You probably could have told me there was some prior event going on, and I might have believed it. So, I was one of those employees where I stock shelves most of the time. Today I was doing that because things were just flying off the shelves. Every now and then I'd actually find something that someone opened and consumed, and then left the trash there on the shelf. I was standing there stalking a shelf when Karen came over to ask me about some deal that she had only just heard of. I didn't know what she was talking about since she was being extremely vague about it. She didn't know what the item was that she was looking for, and wanted me to go over every single deal on the shelf with her. That's not exactly why I was there. I was here to stock shelves and sometimes help customers find certain things. I wasn't there to help them decide what was a deal and what wasn't in a vague attempt to waste time. So basically what was going on here was she heard of a deal, didn't know what it was, but was interested to try to seek it out, even though it could also end up being something that she didn't want anyways. I told her good luck on her search, but she wanted to make a big deal out of that. Instead of going and complaining to the manager, though, about my unhelpful behavior, like I would hope that she would have done, she decided to stay there and slap me in the arm and insult me. I told her she needed to stop assaulting me before the police were called, and she made that I can't believe you threatened me face, and she stormed off. Once she left, I forgot about that, and I went back to my job and stalking. Well, about 20 minutes later, she came back with my manager, who is also a very cool and level-headed woman that usually had my back, unless I was actually in the wrong, which I had been a few times in the past. But not about something like what followed. Karen pointed her bony finger at me and said, He's right there! I dropped what I was doing to deal with this situation, and my manager asked me if I put my hands on this woman in any way. I told her absolutely not, and I encouraged we look at the cameras. 
Karen insisted angrily that I hit her several times, and she said that she'd already called the police on me. I looked at her with a smug expression and asked if she really believed that the cops were going to see the camera footage and forgive her for making false accusations. Karen just kept insisting that I hit her, and we went over to the camera room while she screamed about it, having me arrested. She also threw in that we didn't need to look at the cameras because the customer was always right. So the police got there before we got the footage, and she yelled about it to them. They felt the need to detain me before they saw the camera footage, and that confused me a bit, but I know everything was going to be just fine once they saw the footage. I didn't really mind. So the police looked at the footage, undetained me, and went to go arrest the Karen for lying to the police. The only thing is, she broke away from the police to lunge after me, knocking me to the ground. I put my hands up in a reaction to keep her from hitting me again, and she ran towards my hands with her chest. The second she made contact with my hands before knocking me over, she turned around and started yelling about how I grabbed her chest, and she wanted me arrested. The cops were already putting cuffs on her, and they got her out of the store. I was given about a half hour to calm down, which I thanked my manager for, and then I got back to work. How can someone be so delusional to do something like this and think she's in the right? It'll always baffle me to think back on this. I still can't believe she did what she did in front of the police. After this, I didn't see Karen again, nor did I ever have another run-in with one again, and I'm thankful for that. Although Black Friday, year after year, had been dying out more and more, that day has always had me on edge, because you never know when a Karen will pop out from the wild and attack. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. Who is that behind, Who is that you? behind you?